Hey YouTube, the Christmas saga continues and we're going to work on the infrastructure for a mega tree this time. Central to the concept of one of these big pixel trees is some sort of a pole to hang the thing from. And the most popular design sort of by far in the community is the thing called an ASAP pole. Of course, ASAP is a strap and pole. So it's a strap and pole pole. Okay, the beef for this monster is this thing here. This is a 10 foot section of two inch rigid conduit. And it's important that it is the rigid conduit and not the EMT. Uh, EMT is nowhere near strong enough to be the main structure for a thing like this. And the other half of the pole is this one and a half inch rigid conduit, uh, which being a half inch smaller will slip inside of the two inch pipe. It's not a real close tight fit, so we're gonna have to make some bushings and bearings. Don't worry, we'll address that. Then the whole thing is ridiculously heavy, so to raise it and lower it, we're gonna use this strap-based winch, the kind of thing you'd see on the front of a boat, for instance. Now the winch mounts on the outside of the two inch pipe, but it doesn't mount tight to it. That would be too easy, we could just use U-bolts. It's gotta stand off enough to let another piece of conduit slide through here. That's gonna be our push pole, more on that in a bit. Uh, the important thing is, clearly we're gonna need some sort of a bracket to mount this if we want it an inch up in the air. That's where this steel plate comes from. Now you can buy the plates to make this pole pre-drilled and pre-fabbed from a couple of places, but I decided to roll my own since I had the metal sitting around. I drew up a SketchUp template so I didn't have to mark right on the steel. Uh, the link to this is available in the description. In the meantime, get this template on this metal and get to drilling. Now the reality is there's some room for error in these holes, but the drilling is just plain old easier if you do it in steps, and that lets you use drill bits sized such that they can mostly self-center. The small bit in the punch holes, and then the larger bit in the hole you pre-drilled. I'm just hand tightening my clamp until I get the big bit to pull the workpiece where it needs to be. Then I stop it, but leave the drill quill down while I tighten up the clamp. This gives me a hole which is, for most practical purposes, exactly centered on the original punch mark. A sharp bit and the right press speed will give you these long curly cues, which are fun and mean you're doing it right, but they're also sharp and dangerous, so watch yourself. It takes a solvent to get the cutting fluid off the part, but once that's dry, you can give it a coat of paint. The store I was at didn't have spacers, so I'm using the version of the instructions that uses two extra nuts and an extra washer to create the right lift here. You can see the two washers and all four nuts going on to the five inch bolt, which goes into the corner. You tighten them down one at a time. First one, preferably with an impact or something really strong, and then you can hand tighten the other now three jam nuts. Next to go on are the two inch bolts that are not part of the winch mount. These use the nuts with a built in washer that came with the exhaust clamps rather than having a separate washer of their own. Rather than buy couplings, I snipped four one inch pieces of half inch PVC pipe off of a longer section I had. They will seat and self center over those exhaust clamp nuts with just a couple taps of a hammer, although you do have to have a fifth piece of the PVC to drive them. There's a washer and a standard 3 8 inch nut on top, and you can use the impact to squish this down until it's exactly level with your stack of nuts on the longer bolt. The other two inch bolts mount the end of the strap winch. I made the template an inch longer after I built this to allow a little bit more uh, wiggle room when you're assembling it. And it will require a deep well socket to get these tightened because there's just not room to get under the winch strap. Next come the last two PVC spacers using spacer number five as your driving tool for the last one. Two more washers, two more standard 3 8 nuts, and then the impact to tighten them down to exactly the right height. The last bolt to go in is the shorty, the three quarter inch bolt that holds the back of the strap winch. The instructions say to leave the two long bolts loose while you get this in. That's probably a good idea. It would have made it easier, but it lined up okay and it tightens up fine. Last but not least are the exhaust clamp pieces that go around the two inch pole. You should still have four of the nuts that came with these things that have the built in washers, but if not, a regular nut and a washer will work just fine. Finally, after it's all assembled, you can put the handle on the winch. You could do this really at any point, but it's sort of in the way while you're doing the rest of the process. The handle on mine came with a self-locking nylon inserted nut. There's definitely a right amount of tight for these things. Since I'm going higher than 15 feet, I need a pair of pins to extend the reach of my push pole. 
So I need two holes in the inner pole that are 90 degrees offset from each other and about an inch apart. Easiest way to do this is put a piece of tape around the pole, cut it to an exact fit, then measure and mark on the tape while it's a straight piece. You can wrap it back around the pole and it'll show you exactly where to punch the holes. These need to be drilled all the way through and they have to line up perfectly, even if you didn't get them dead centered. So go ahead and drill through the first one and then just keep going, drill through the other side of the pole. So a mortising chisel is no lathe tool, which is fine because a drill press is no lathe. But necessity is the mother of invention, and I need this PVC cap to be turned down to two very specific diameters. You'll see why in a second. With the right speeds and a sharp tool, this actually works pretty well, but I wouldn't do it too often because it's incredibly hard on all of the tools, including the one who dreamed up this cockamamie scheme. All right, here's the PVC cap that uh, we turned down so that it is a good snug but slip fit in the bottom of this pole and the outer diameter is a good slip fit in the two inch pole. Uh, this is gonna keep the bottom of the smaller pole from wiggling around inside the bigger one as it goes up and down. Of course, we need a second bearing point to keep the thing steady, and that's what this is for. Uh, this is a two inch to one and a half inch threaded coupler. It's designed to go into the top of the two inch pole, just threads in there, um, and it used to thread onto the bottom of the one and a half inch pole. In the meantime, this happened to it. I took the Dremel with a round grinding wheel and went around and around and around and around and ground down the threads and ground out the inside of this to where it is a good, again, slip fit. Um, it's, it's loose enough that it's not gonna jam and bind, but there ain't a lot of extra room in there. Nothing fancy on the epoxy front, just a good old fashioned JB weld and a wide enough applicator that I can spread it around pretty evenly. Now we just let that set up and the two poles will be ready to put together. While the epoxy cures is a good time to do some assembly on the two inch pole. First step is to measure and mark for the mounting location for the winch. The plans call for it to go halfway up the two inch pole, which seems to be a good compromise between the range of lift and the stability of the EMT. Of course, that gives you a total of 15 feet as is, which is why I had to drill the pinholes in the inner pole because I need 17 plus or minus feet when I'm done. I'm trying to get all these bolts tightened evenly so that the winch strap sits tangent to the pole, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. The push pole, which does the actual lifting of the top section, is a one inch by 10 foot piece of EMT. I thread it underneath the winch bracket, and then I pulled the strap down to the bottom of the EMT, mostly just so I could play with it. As you can see, you crank the handle, the strap pulls on the bottom of the EMT and pushes it towards the top of the pole. A PVC coupler attached with a hose clamp acts as the top guide for the EMT. If you get all three points of contact in a nice straight line, the push pole goes up and down with relatively little effort. Next step for me is the tree topper, which is going to be made from two circles cut out of three quarter inch plywood each and sandwiched together. To cut the circles, I'm screwing the square blanks to a sacrificial piece that I've clamped to the table of the bandsaw and then just rotating them through the blade. By using the same hole in the sacrificial plate, I can ensure that I get two circles that are exactly the same size. I actually have them screwed together through that uh, center hole right now. I'm laying out the holes for all of my pixel strips using dividers, and then I've got to go drill all 20 of these holes. Again, with the two things sandwiched together so that the holes line up exactly. These will mount to the tree by slipping over a one and a half by three inch nipple at the top of the inner pole, which unfortunately is a very strange outside diameter. So I had to cut that with a circle cutter, which means I can only cut one at a time. The last piece to build is the base for the pole. Now, if you're on a level stretch of ground, there's a thing called a portable hole, which is essentially a concrete box that works really well. I unfortunately am on an eight degree slope, so I gotta build this funny T-shaped thing with a front leg that I can prop up to keep the pole straight up and down. I have a 100 inch diameter base, so I've got a 100 inch long piece of four x four here that I'm hogging out for the half lap joint with a circular saw and a chisel. It actually works pretty well for a rough construction technique, but I switched over to the table saw and the dado stack for the shorter leg. Once this part of the half lap was cut, I took the short leg over to the drill press and used the circle cutter to cut a trench for a two inch threaded coupler. Okay, well the plan here is pretty simple. Uh, I'm mixing up some epoxy with the 
world's biggest stir stick. And I'm going to epoxy this two inch threaded coupler into that groove that I made with the circle cutter. The goal is to have plenty of epoxy in here, no, no gaps. So if you got to go back and fill a little bit, go back and fill. And after the epoxy's cured, it's back to the drill press to start the through hole that I'll use to bolt this all together. The drill press gets me started straight, then I can use the top piece to mark the bottom and finally drill the bottom by hand. The bottom piece also gets some holes out on the ends. These are going to be used for rebar to stake the thing down and keep it from twisting. Deploying the tree starts with assembling the base. There's a single through bolt that holds the two pieces of the base together. It doesn't seem like enough structure for a thing that's so heavy, but remember, the goal of the base is just to keep the pole from sliding around sideways. It's the guy wires that hold it vertical. I put some Teflon tape on the two inch pole and then threaded it into the coupler that we epoxied into the base. The first set of guy ropes attaches at the top of the two inch pole, which is 10 feet up. So my guy rope anchors are going 10 feet out from the base. These are 16 inch threaded anchors, which will hold hundreds of pounds, even in the kind of squishy ground we have right now. Eventually I may weld some eye bolts onto the pole or make a guy plate, but for this year, I'm just gonna tie these ropes onto the post and then use a hose clamp to keep them from sliding down. With the back two guys tied and a block under the front leg, the pole will stand up close enough to straight that it's not gonna tip over. Now the straighter this thing is, the more stable it is. So take your time and get it right. In my case, left and right straight up and down is adjusted by moving the base up and down the hill. The front and back axis is adjusted by moving this block around. Believe it or not, this is straight up and down. The camera is actually sitting on a hill, which makes it look like it's leaning back towards the house. So I take a measurement for the front foot that I'm going to have to cut, and then I can undo just the front guy rope and lay the whole pole down to finish up the assembly. First thing to go back on is the winch. Make sure it goes on so that the strap comes off the roll against the two inch pole as opposed to over the top and out the front. That makes it a straighter pull on the EMT push pole. Then loosen the PVC guide and line it back up with the winch. Now the top pole can be slid into the bottom pole. For everything to line up later, the bottom most of those two sets of cross drilled holes that we put in the smaller one has to point straight up and down. Otherwise the EMT won't be able to connect to it later. Some more Teflon tape and a pipe wrench and all the top connections can thread together. If you're working on a hill, you'll need a helper to keep that top pole from sliding around on you. Next, the EMT slides in. The pinhole we drilled in the top of this thing should also be straight up and down vertical, although it's less critical on the EMT because it's easy enough to twist around later. I screwed a three inch nipple into the coupler on the upper pipe and then slipped both plates of my tree topper over top of it. Mine's secured with a pipe cap. If you were doing some sort of a star, you could use a coupler and another piece of pipe. I found it much easier to thread all of the bolts through the tree topper than take one out at a time to put a strip of lights in rather than trying to get all 20 of these things to line up at one time. With all the lights and the top guy ropes attached, this thing can be stood up for what hopefully is the last time. This is not that complicated of an operation. Yes, it's heavy, but all the weight is sitting on the ground. If you walk it up like you would an extension ladder, it's a pretty easy one man job. After reattaching the front guy rope, I drove some rebar down through those holes in the ends of the base. This guarantees that the legs won't slide down the hill and gives a little protection against tipping. And the custom length front foot goes on with some strapping plates. I made my base ring out of PVC. Conduit would have been better, but I didn't have a good way to bend it. Needed 13 and change feet. Since I had to have a coupler somewhere, I decided to put it right in the middle where I was going to be attaching this with some brackets anyway. The PVC bends around and attaches to the other two sides of the base the same way. Time for the first part of the crank up. This is remarkably easy given how heavy and unbalanced the load is on this pole. And here on round one, I'm only cranking until both sets of my cross drilled holes are exposed over the top of the two inch pole. Now there is a system whereby you can put the pins on the ends of long sticks so you can do this from the ground, but I figured it was just as easy to climb the ladder. You pin the inner pole and then climb down and let the whole thing back down until the top pole is resting on the pin instead of being held up by the strap and the push pole. And after the weight is off of it, you let the EMT all the way back down until the hole you drilled in it lines up with the remaining hole in the one and a half inch pole. Then a second pin, or in my case a bolt, is put through both the upper pole and the EMT. Don't over tighten this or you create a pinch point down at the top PVC guide. 
and then you can continue skyward. I'm cranking this up to probably 16, 16 and a half feet. I still need a little bit of slack in the strip so that they can be attached to the base, which is a great job for zip ties and an even better job for helpers if you've got them. With the strips tied off, the last couple cranks go into the pole to put the whole thing under tension and get them nice and straight. And because I used PVC, I had to use rebar and zip ties to anchor it halfway around the circle. If you use something like conduit, you won't have this problem. And the last step is to finalize the spacing and tighten up the zip ties so that these things stay put. Well, it took every bit of the weekend, but it's up. Now, clearly there's nothing incredibly complicated about this project. It's just heavy, tall, and quite frankly, a little expensive by the time you're done with it. Honestly, at this point, there's only two things I would change. The big one is this bottom ring. Uh, I should have found a way to get the conduit bent because uh, the PVC is getting the job done, but it's janky at best. Uh, we're gonna do something better next year for sure. The other little tip is make sure you select your conduit carefully. Now, the two inch stuff is readily available at any big box store, but the one and a half, I had to go to an electrical supply to get that. And I got one that has a big dent <laughs> about a third of the way down. Obviously it still works, but that makes for a, a stiff spot in the mechanism that uh, could have been avoided just by simply looking over the conduit and asking the guy to get me a different piece. Of course, the wiring in the controllers for a thing like this are a whole other half of the story, uh, but that's gonna have to wait till next time. Stick around guys, it's not Christmas yet.